the glory of Jesus Christ. Did you know it is possible to be a scientist even when you are very young? One of the most important things is to learn how to observe. That is, to learn how to watch things closely and carefully, to see how they are made and how they work. By watching fish, for example, we can learn many wonderful things how perfectly they are made to suit their watery world. Do you know how fish breathe? They take oxygen right out of the water instead of breathing air as we do. Notice how easily their bodies slip through the water. They can go up, they can go down. And they have such a good propeller one little flip of that powerful tail, and away he goes. Can you imagine even a speedboat starting off that fast? The pairs of fins are for balancing and for steering, for slow, careful movement, or for putting on the brakes. And what about the fish's eyes? This eye is specially made for sharp vision under water. Everything about the fish is wonderfully made. The muscles, glands, nerves, and bones that go to make up its body. But the most fascinating thing about these little creatures is their family life. Have you ever watched a father and mother fish raise a family? It takes long hours of watching day and night to see the whole story. But here at Moody Institute of Science, our photographer did the watching for us with a camera. Sometimes he waited for days at a time just to be on hand for some important part of the family history. The family life of the blue acara, for example, kept him busy for many months. Now the pictures tell us a very interesting story. Some things may seem strangely familiar, almost like ways of our human families. The Akaras are famous for their family life, and when you see some of the wonderful things they do, you'll understand why. These fish are devoted to their babies, like our fathers and mothers are devoted to us. The parents share all the duties of having a family. Right from the start, they do everything together. Choosing a place for the nest comes first. The Akaras like to lay their eggs on a flat, smooth rock, and it has to be nice and clean. It may take hours to clear a place for the eggs. Removing pebbles with the mouth is rather slow business. But no matter how long it takes, it's all done with special care. The Akaras even scrub the rock to be sure it's absolutely clean. Mrs. Akara sweeps the rock spick and span, using her fins as a broom, for tiny plants grow on the rock that would harm the eggs. Then it's time to lay the eggs. Father Akara follows close behind, covering the eggs with a fluid that will make them fertile, so the eggs will grow into new little baby fishes. The female deposits the eggs one at a time and sticks them to the rock with a substance like glue so they won't wash away. Over and over the nest, filling all the empty spaces. Only the sense of touch tells her where to put them, yet she never makes the mistake of putting one on top another. When she is finished, there are several hundred eggs in the nest, all neatly arranged and so close together that each one is touching another. Right away, one of the parents begins to fan the eggs, so the water moving over them will keep the eggs clean.
And while one fans the eggs, the other stands guard. Never for a moment are the eggs left unguarded. Fish eggs would be a tempting meal for any of their neighbors. Fanning the eggs is tiring work, and every few minutes the parents exchange places. The one on guard has a chance to rest his fins and to snatch a bite to eat. Both parents stick to their task without quarreling about whose turn it is to do it. Keeping the nest clean takes a lot of work. All the dirt must be scoured carefully away. The white eggs are eaten because they'll never become babies anyway. In spite of all the parents can do, that happens to some eggs. But the other eggs are the object of constant care. Two or three days after they are laid, the eggs will hatch. And before that day arrives, nurseries must be made ready. Well, that means a lot of digging and moving of rocks, for the nurseries are little holes in the sand. So the Akaras go about digging their nurseries, busy and contented. <laughs> Then the big day arrives. As the fish eggs hatch, father carefully picks one up in his mouth, carries it to the nursery, and spits it out into its new home. Father and mother make many trips back and forth, and for a while, both of them are very busy. At first, the babies don't look much like fish. In their hollowed out nursery, they look more like a spoonful of jelly. But they grow rapidly, and their shape begins to change. Their fins begin to develop, too. Well, they're still not fast enough to escape from enemies. So all the while, the faithful parents stand guard over their family. Some of the youngsters grow bolder and begin to wander off but father and mother pick them up and bring them safely home. When danger threatens and the Akaras signal, the babies go clear to the bottom to hide. In the family of Akaras, Mother and father always work together as a perfect team, taking care of their young. No, they won't desert their babies, even when strange monsters come near. Courage, faithfulness, and devotion are well demonstrated by the Blue Acaris, and that's why they are famous for their family life. The Akara's devotion to their babies is a wonderful thing, but the love of human parents for their children is different and far more wonderful. And what children do is important in family life too, for God requires that children obey their parents. Yes, watching fish is fun, and it can be important too. When we watch the living things about us carefully and with patience, there are many wonderful lessons we can learn. <laughs>